How are you doing, Lee? Hey, man. I'm good. I'm actually all right at the moment. You know, yeah. ups and downs, but I'm, I'm okay today. How are you? I'm actually, yeah, I'm not too bad. I mean, like, I've, I've been pretty much the same. I mean, I've, I've been out of Bristol for the past kind of three months because I've been okay. living with my parents. Because oh, right. Like, because, like, yeah, because, of, you know, I survived the first lockdown okay, but then when they announced the second one, I was like, this time I need people around me, you know, like kind yeah. of, which is going to make sure that I'm on a relative even keel. I understand that. It's really hard. I actually thought recently about this and about how I felt, I felt very um, uh, lucky yeah. to have, to have people around me quite, quite often. Uh, my partner. And then I, I live in, in Bristol when I'm, yeah. obviously, do you know I live in Hamburg? Yeah, yeah I, well, I, heard, I heard that you they that you're gonna spend some time in Hamburg. Yeah, so and, and I and I love it there, and I have I live with my partner there, and, and it's I've been very blessed to have this time, you know, when, during lockdown to spend more time with her. And then when I'm in mm -hmm. Bristol, I actually live with our sound engineer Chris. You know, Wiz. Yeah. You know, I, we always yeah, yeah tell the world about the wizard. Um, yeah, so we, we know we know we know I know about the Wiz. He's, uh, he's He's punishing. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> well, goodness, anyone who also does the sound for Sun is, is, exactly. is, is, is going to be punishing. You know, you'll probably hear some um, some noises of metal just every now and then. Just yeah, just metal music just appearing in the background. That's him mixing at the moment. Oh, but, wow. um, it, it it's just you know now when I'm living in Bristol, I, I've I've got whiz around as well so i'm never i'm not really alone alone very often mm. so I, yeah I've, I've, i felt lucky in that respect well, I, mean, I, think, and I, I, I think that actually you know like kind of i feel lucky as if i'm being able to come here and be with my parents and actually you know kind of the other thing is also like kind of having things like the family dog and then yeah, I'm like hey if you need if you ever needed to escape you just look at her go right do you want to go out yeah and actually, you know, kind of, I think it has made us to like be aware of maybe like the more simpler things in life mm -hmm. and actually not take everything fully for granted. I mean, it's funny you say that because it was yesterday I was on the phone with Liam, our old tour manager who, who now works in our management team. Mm. Uh, and we were just having a chat and he was saying how, you know, like he's, he's got a dog recently and he was like, you know, just going for a walk with my dog is just so fulfilling. I was like, it is like mm. watching your dog just run around for a bit. It's one of the most like innocent joys you can yeah. experience. And then so all, all of your worries just, just disappear for just that moment. You just watch this dog just run around in circles and you're like, sick. And the, and the other thing about it is that, uh, is that for me, it was like, right, okay, it gives you some structure, it gives you purpose. Right, you've yeah. got to go out because the dog's got to go out, sort of thing. Then you've got to kind of, and then I've noticed that that's sometimes changed my mood. Because, like, for instance, um, like yesterday, I was in quite a down, like, kind of a bit of a down space. But then, because of going out with my mum and with the dog, and it's sort of like, right, okay, then that changed my mindset into something more positive. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing to have that. I mean, like, yeah, and I guess like, because also like, I mean like, because also like, usually with you guys, you'd probably be planning to go off on tour Maybe around this time or something. Tour constantly. I mean, that's that's what we, that's what we do. We're yeah, we're touring band. We love it. I mean, we all miss it so much. Like, I think, like me personally, if I'm honest, at the beginning of the pandemic, we'd taken some time off because we were touring so much. Yeah. And um, so just before the pandemic kicked off, we were actually on time off. We were yeah. taking a couple of months to just not tour, settle ourselves and, you know, yeah. re just ground ourselves. And, and um, re recalibrate yourselves because yeah, sometimes right. you need that because of like, you need energy. The other thing is that it's also like as if in kind of giving yourself a grounding within relationships or like, like friendships exactly. and that sort of thing. Reconnect and see family because you don't, you don't see you don't have much time to see people when you're when you're touring so much um 
of which you were, because you were doing a ridiculous amount, especially in like 2019. Yeah, well, def definitely. And well, 2019, I mean, 2018 was probably just probably more even. Um, mm. And it, it, it reached the point where we just had to, you know, take a break, which was nice. And like, we all relished that, spent time with families and had some time apart. And then the pandemic hit. So yeah. just as we were about to go back on tour, it all just disappeared. And like, it was the weirdest moment for, mm. for me. Like I had so much anxiety about going back on tour and yeah. being like going from, going from touring all the time to not touring at all. And then going straight back on, going back on tour. And I was yeah. a bit nervous. And then this happened and it just ruined me. Like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to feel because I really wanted to tour, but now I couldn't. But then I wasn't sure if I was ready to tour, but I mm. couldn't. So like, I couldn't change anything. God, it must, I mean, it must make the anxiety like that much, like that much worse. I'm oh, sorry, my, my nephew's in the background. It's all right. Um, like you'll hear sounds of metal soon. So. <laughs> Well, actually, to be honest, I, li I like a good bit of metal, to be honest. Me too. Because actually, I find that sometimes with heavier music, it can be really calming. Yeah, like definitely. There, there's, there's something yeah. about, like, kind of, sometimes, you know, like, kind of putting on, like, a grindcore record and just, like, I could find myself being overwhelmed with joy. Uh, I, I mean, complete agreement with you. I yeah. love metal. I love I love the the way it can put me in a trance, even though it's so heavy and aggressive in, mm. in sound it's also got this uh sometimes meditative feel to it well it really does well especially like when you're talking about like with with wiz and you know like he's, he does like sound of the sun yeah it's like going to one of those shows and it's like kind of going to like i'll describe it to people who've never seen sun live as like kind of going to like a two hour long sound bath i know <laughs> It's, 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 it's that sort of thing where you're still enthralled and you're still captivated by it, but it's, it, but it's like kind of in a weird way, almost nothing happens, but they, but with all the dry ice and the lights, they make it look really dramatic. Yep. Well, it is, it's, um, it's an experience, isn't it? It's, mm. it's, it's kind of like, I don't know, I guess it, it, it's also kind of like an art project, isn't it? Where there's the drones are so like all encompassing with the smoke and the lights and them on the stage with their capes. And there's just this pounding of noise coming at you for like two hours. Yeah. It's, the thing is, is that when you're in it, you don't necessarily, doesn't feel like two hours. No. Well, you have to get into it. Yeah. Oh yeah, then, exactly. I get it's not for everyone. Yeah. But then also like, I can understand why people you know, he listen to it because they do listen to it because it does help them. So I do find sometimes drone music does help me with my mental health sometimes. Yeah. Just because of it, it slows everything down and it calms people and it's just like there was that kind of tranquilizing effect, really. But where it's like, I guess that you guys could like obviously differ because it's much more like a high intense energy. Ah oh, well, I don't know really. I guess sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes some of the some of the stuff we play, it feels quite meditative too. Like sometimes it's just uh, like I'm thinking constantly. Like I need yeah. to think. I need to concentrate. And then other times it's just like I know the song so well that it just happens. And I I haven't I've like you know like four songs have gone by on a set and I haven't even noticed. Freaking hell. Which so it's is, like almost, I guess it becomes like kind of because you play them to a certain extent that it becomes like second nature. Very much. And that, but then, like, I'm not like, sometimes that's great. Sometimes I feel like you haven't been aware that you're actually on the stage. You, you mm. just, you've entered like a, a work state in your mind where, you know, like people often say, like when you're driving, you you could be driving for like two hours and then there's this bit in the middle that you, you haven't even realized has happened you don't remember changing gear you don't remember yeah. turning corners or indicating but you've driven through like two towns yeah you just it's just gone and i guess that happens sometimes it shows especially when you're on tour but then there's all these there's always these moments mm. that happen throughout it that pull you back in and there's just nothing like it like playing a part of the 
one of your songs that you just really that you're really into right now because obviously mm -hmm. again with that it goes up and down like people always say like what's your favorite song to play yeah i don't know that like it changes daily weekly monthly it depends how many times i've played them it depends where or the 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 situation like i could i can hate well done but mm. then we can play it at a certain show and it was it was sick you know like yeah. it just might happen that day often so I, think, I generally like, don't enjoy playing well done so i think that's the thing like can like what what i mean like i'm just trying to think of, of the top of my head um i mean what particular moments i mean obviously you speak of magic moments sort of thing but are there any which really spring to mind? Uh, I mean, truly, yeah. loads. I mean, now, because we're... The, a moment you just reminded me of mm -hmm. uh, is playing Start the Bus. Oh, good. It was my first ever Idol show. It was New Year's Eve. I had been in the band for about a month, and um, we, were, we were headlining start the bus for, for new year's eve i was so nervous i hadn't played live in six years i think it wow. was um you know I was, I was busy taking drugs so mm. like i i wasn't really with it enough to to ever play music so when i got sober and and then i joined joined the band and had to do this i was shitting myself jeff like i <laughs> It was the, one of the scariest things I've ever done, but the euphoria of that show after, it just, sorry, there's a train. I've got the door open. Well, hey, um, we're still train. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the euphoria I felt after that show for doing this thing that I, I always used to love so much that I hadn't done in six years. And I'd never done it sober either. That was the first sober wow. show I ever played. Uh, and it was amazing and we covered the rap by the walkman yeah and I, had the, I actually had the chords written down on the floor on, on paper in front of me i think, oh, that, was, was a, I think that was one of those yeah. shows which i which i actually wasn't at because i think i was i think i was at the louisiana that night i think yeah, I, think I was yeah i think i was at coming who was playing it's like scarlet last or someone like that doing like in a new probably season. a much better band <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they were, they were, especially at the time, they were freaking great. Yeah, they really were. Actually, I, I mean, I loved them. I yeah. really did love them. I thought I, they were an amazing band. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, just such a shame that it kind of petered out because, in like, especially the first two or three years, it was like the, the energy which they had was like, it was like, it was like, hello, this is like the nearest version to almost like the Stooges. Yeah, I thought they were sick. Joe and I actually made a music video for them. Wow. They never. Wow. Oh, never yeah, came out right. because we did that we did that just before they disbanded wow so that would have been which which song was that for i i i actually can't remember now i don't remember the names of songs anyway so i'm never going to remember that that's fair enough i mean like but i mean like that was quite a while ago to be honest yeah a long time ago i think we were uh it might have been during the our first european tour wow we were doing it on the road wow like, how long have we been in idols like, uh, like um eight eight years maybe wow. eight yeah years. Kind of, it's, gone, it's gone quick jeff <laughs> yeah i know to be honest it, it, it's like especially the past couple of years have just been just blown by yeah i mean, I mean well I've, oh god the last year i don't even know what that is i don't even know what to call the last year but before that, I mean, it just felt like it felt like the years were just running away with themselves. Mm. Like going, the amount that I've done in the last last uh, don't count the last year, but mm. once before that, yeah, we achieved so much and had so much it was fun. Huge. The it, of mean, it was like, I mean, I mean, like I, I must admit, as someone who's like kind of a coattail rider. It felt like as if I was riding a wave, you know, like in one of those huge, you know, like in the surfing waves. Um, mate, something that always filled me with joy when I played Bristol was seeing you in the crowd. And it was always a test because if I saw you in the crowd and you weren't enjoying yourself, I knew that we were shit. <laughs> and the moment, 
the moment you started bopping your head around, I was always filled with joy in the fact that I knew we were doing we were doing good. Because yeah. whenever we weren't playing good, you hated it. Yeah, but, but, but I think the thing is, so, so you've, you've, you've kind of got to be honest as well, you know. Yeah. And it's also like, cause they think, cause I've never liked, I've never really liked talking down to people. So I've always tried to give people constructive criticism. criticism. How's it gone? Yeah, you know, like kind of, or like kind of, I like to say to them, you know, like I, it might not be my cup of tea, but I can see what you're trying to do, or like kind of, you know, like, very diplomatic. Yeah. But, uh, uh, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, what has been your your worst idol show? Oh God. Um, Too many. <laughs> there's probably yeah, there's been a few. There, there was there was one where um, Adam Greenwood tried to take me out, sort of thing, inadvertently. So I'd written the fifty fifty review about idols. I think it's before you you joined, really. Yeah, yeah. And um so yeah i had that, I had that kind of happen um i don't know i mean i think the thing is though so i think it really clicked into gear um after i caught you guys after going to see jungle at the exchange so we're going to see jungle and then running over i think it was like one of your first shows with them yeah it must have been that was that was early i remember jungle being in town because our manager was their tour manager at the time yeah so um yeah, we were we had um, we were gonna go, but we couldn't because we were playing. Yeah, so I remember going to going going to see Jungle, then literally sprinting over and catching the last 15, 20 minutes, and it just you know sometimes when you see that magic spark and you go like right okay something's finally clicked. Yeah, you know like I, I remember we, we felt that as well at one point. Yeah, because I remember walking in and it was a bit like, hang on, this is a bit different. This is not them trying to be you know like Maccabee. This is like it was definitely. I would thought to which rush through my head, but more like Fugazi and more like kind of interesting, intro, introspective and kind of sonically, texturally sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely, there was definitely a turning point for us in in what we wanted. Yeah. Um, it just, it clicked one day. We, we, would, we were, I guess, at the beginning, just searching for what it was we wanted to be. And I think in many ways, we're always searching. Because yeah. it keeps it fresh, it keeps it keeps us uh, excited about the music. But also the other thing is that for from someone like myself, it's also like kind of it takes people a while to find to really understand what their identity really is, you know, and like what works for them. Because like it's it's good to like kind of you know take influence from other people, but then it's like kind of finding a natural route, I guess. Yeah, I, I like honestly, even last year I was still doing that. Yeah. Like, um, you know, that the, the the disconnect from from playing and trying to trying to be a band, um, trying to figure out what our roles were in the band or what you know what mm. we bring to the table and coming to terms with maybe the, the, you know that you're not very good at certain things and trying to move away from them and, and yeah. focus on the things that you are good at and you know like that that for me last year was actually quite difficult too and 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 not being able to play yeah. or enjoy ultra mono mm. you know and go out and play it i mean so i think you're right there but and it, i think it just continues i think it yeah. continues forever um and even when you do find your footing in something like i don't want to just stay doing that one no. thing you still want to explore other things but something we try and do is not um or realize we shouldn't do is push ourselves to a, to a boundary that is unachievable mm. but explore new new realms yeah, definitely. In what, with, within what you understand and what you can do. And I think also it's about like kind of, I guess, and also like a thing is something that a lot of people have had to see maybe in the first year is look for their inner strengths, really. And it's I think hard that, though, and, and I think that sometimes that's, it's also hard sometimes when you're, you know, a band who gets projected into the limelight and, and dealing with things like criticism and stuff like that. 
Um, I mean, I'm, I'm quite lucky because I don't have to, I don't have to deal with that. I don't spend too much. I don't spend time reading, um, like reading reviews and, like that. and stuff because like as much as um, I, I find it all, I find it, my, my relationship with this stuff is, is completely torn because yeah. I don't do much on social media. Yeah. I, find it, I find it too tough after a while. Like I don't, I understand the purpose of connectivity and I'm always happy to, to speak to people, especially mm. in person, like always yeah. happy. But I always find this, this disconnect with, um, with reviews and stuff, especially from, from recently. So mm. like, there is no, um, you know, like all the reviews came in for Ultramono. We weren't playing live either. Yeah. So there was this, there was just this like bombardment of what people yeah. think of us, but not actually seeing us or, or interacting with us. It was mm. just, it was just on top. And I, I, found, I found it strange. I just found it strange. And that's yeah. why I can, I can't get involved in it. No, that's but, that, that, I don't connect with it. That's, that's really good. That's a really good thing, actually, to be honest with you, I think sometimes because of, especially it's like kind of, if you're if you're trying to like kind of help give yourself hope, because it's it's so easy to get sucked into that whole kind of way of seeing things, and some and especially like if you haven't got your usual escapes of like being on stage sort of thing, exactly. And you know, like kind of, I can imagine how hard it is for someone who is like constantly seen in the public eye and on social media a lot. I mean, I'm all right. No one knows who I am. Yeah. I but, jot around. Yeah. But I was means... started wearing glasses. No one, no one recognizes me. <laughs> it's out of disguise. Hey, like, like, you, you just put on a pair of glasses. No they go up and they're like, oh. and I'm like, I was like, oh, it's you. Hold <laughs> him, man of mystery. It's like the old Superman, isn't it? You know, like, it is, like yeah. yeah. All he did is put a seat on a pair, and a pair of glasses. A pair of glasses on. No one knows who you are. Yeah, exactly. Just as soon as the glasses came off, and like, oh, it's him. I mean, uh, and also, I, I, you know, living in Hamburg, like literally no one, no one will know who I am. Yeah. I've only been stopped twice in Hamburg. Wow. Which is, which is amazing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, because I guess that also like, because I guess that sometimes, I guess that's the thing is that also dealing with that counterbalance is sometimes when you do get recognized sort of thing. Um, I mean, how does that make you feel? I like personally not not a lot. I mean, when when if I'm saying if I'm out with Joe, yeah, and uh, and people stop and they see Joe and they want to talk to him, I just I just move out the way. <laughs> That's fair enough. I just stand stand around the corner and Joe often then goes, "Oh, Lee's here as well," and then points at me and I'm like, oh. <laughs> it's it's not, I, I want to interact with people. I just don't even know what to say, you know. Like it, yeah. it, in that in that moment, I have no idea. And like, uh, like at a show, mm. I'm like, I'm all in. If someone yeah. wants to stop, talk to me, and and like, I I completely understand, and I and I want to talk. And you can ask me anything. You can ask me about my guitars, my pedals, or yeah. you know, you can ask me how the tour's going or the album. I'm in. When I'm out in the street, I have no idea what to say to people. It's like a complete, uh, a complete disconnect. But if, I guess that I just say, say thank you all the time. I'm just yeah. constantly saying thank you, thank you. I think I think I'm exactly the same. I think I think if someone stops me in the street, I'd be like, oh god, what do I say to this person? It's it's, um, it's weird. It's just it doesn't feel normal. Hmm. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a normal interaction. Yeah. So I think that, you know, like, whereas if we take ourselves, I guess we see, you know, like gigs and especially like kind of independent venues as our safety nets. Yeah. You know, they, they were like kind of, you know, both the breeding grounds for you guys as artists, but also for you guys as people. Because like yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll work in them like, um, and like kind of, I think that this week is also like kind of about reinforcing, you know, like the actual importance of them. Oh, definitely. And, and they were, I mean, they're so important and they've always been so important. I mean, they've provided me with jobs. They've provided me with fun, friends. Like yeah. I, I, I went and saw 
um, I went and saw Idols for the first time in, oh crap, The Croft. Well, hey. Um, and I loved it. I thought they were brilliant. Mm. And that, that, was, that was so many years ago. And I played one of my first ever sh shows in The Croft as well, with yeah. one of my old uh, emo hardcore bands. Well, hey, the screamer uh, years. Exactly. <laughs> And I remember going to like the police when I was younger to watch bands and um, and just like people like hanging off the rafters and, yeah. the police, you know, just climbing the ceiling and stuff that like getting standing all over the bar. And I was just to be like, like, like the energy in that. Mm. Like One of the things I love is and at the beginning, I, I mean, I didn't have confidence to do yeah. it until I until I broke my own barrier. But walking off the stage and walking into the crowd and just walking around and or getting on the bar and just just cancelling any idea that there is a, a divide between the two mm. places always made me feel so good. I used to love seeing bands do it and I love doing it myself because like when you stood on the stage the whole time, it's like uh I guess it is like a performance. Mm. When you leave the stage, anything can happen at any point. Yeah. Like you don't know who you're going to walk into, see. Like it, it, sometimes you walk around the, the, the crowd and you see people you know, and it, it's amazing to yeah. say hello, have a little cuddle. But it's, also, but it's also like how it, I feel that in that style, that it kind of engages the audience as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so it's kind of like the whole, the whole thing was like, you and Bowen kind of like giving the guitar, like and almost giving the guitar to people and getting them off the stage. Because I think that that is actually, you know, like kind of, it's a really simple thing to do, but it's actually really kind of, it can be motivational and inspirational to people. Because if you're saying to them, look, you, you know, like, look, we're going to give you the confidence, we're, we're going to trust the team with our, with our instrument, come on up. I mean, if like the amount of times I wish that would happen to me when I was in the crowd, you know, mm. like that my favorite band would, would call me up to play the solo in their song or something. Yeah. Uh, I mean, back then I probably, probably wouldn't have taken it. I probably would have shit myself. <laughs> I, I couldn't mean, Most people would have, to be honest, but I think the way that you kind of do it and the fact that you do go up, do you go out and actually deliberately pick people. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's, you know, you just walk around, grab someone, give them the guitar and, and just see what happens. There is no pressure whatsoever. Mm. Like there's no, uh, there's no, there's no real purpose behind it. Just give the guitar to someone and, and, and get them to like, see if they want to have some fun. And if we go to give the guitar to someone and they say no, move away. Yeah. Like they don't want, they're like, they're happy. They don't want to be involved. Find someone else who's, who's up for it. And I think that's important because it's, you're not pressuring anyone if they if they don't want to be. It's just yeah. you know if you if you want to come up and do it, do it. I mean, it's, it's a laugh, isn't it? It kind of reminds me of in the way of like kind of this is something I think Green Day used to do, where they used to invite fans on stage to play like a yeah. Green Day song. I think that it is it's such a simple kind of thing. It also breaks down the barrier in between like the, the in between the audience and the band. Oh, I mean. One of my favorite things, uh, not necessarily, you know, like handing the guitar over, like we often do that in, in certain songs that allow it to happen. Yeah. So, you know, if it goes, if it goes completely wrong, it doesn't matter. You know, it, it can just be this like almighty mess and it's fun and it's funny and people just dance and get away with, like Exeter, for instance. Yeah. Um, but when someone says like, like someone has a sign and they say, can I play drums in Samaritans? And you're like, all right well let's let's yeah. see now that's a very <laughs> that's a very important thing because hitting like in exeter i play one note yeah so i i give them the guitar and i show them the one note and i just say go ding 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 and do whatever you want anything yeah. else do what you want you can but that's just the note if you don't know it that's it do what you want playing the drums for samaritans is like John it's very different. A crash course you know yeah. yeah yeah it's quite a complex drum beat to, to me and it is. I mean, like, to be honest, I mean, like, the, the, the essential kind of like groove and backbeat is relatively simple because I can, I can speak as a drummer, but it's the way that he plays it. Yeah. As sure. well, because like, like definitely, 
you know, like, you know, because it is like a four four time signature, but it's but it's also but it's all to do with like how he manoeuvres around the drum kit. Yep, definitely. And yeah, I, I so if you give that to someone else to do, there now that person is now in charge of our whole band because wow. they they are our timekeeper, they are our reference points, you know, and now. So when when someone comes up and they do it and they nail it, I'm always like, that's so sick, you know. Or, or like if someone comes up and they don't completely nail it. Uh, so far, that's not happened. Like it's been really good. Like, uh, or they do their like, they 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 keep time, they keep us going, yeah. and they do their own thing, and that's also fucking cool. I mean, no I mean, one like, no one's ever yeah. bluffed it. Have you ever done it where where people didn't actually know the songs? No, that hasn't happened. Only on guitar. Yeah. I mean, um, but like I said, that, it just just doesn't matter, you know. You can so just I, I mean, uh, I found it. myself. This brings up one memory of me being invited on stage to play. Um, it was um, actually I've, I've had a couple of these. Um, I remember seeing uh, once it was I was going to see Surfer Blood, and yeah. I didn't know actually any of the song, really any of the songs. I was just down the front, you know, nodding away as as usual. So they got me up on stage to play the cow to like play the cowbell. And I'm like, do you know the song? So I'm like, no. Nope. Do you have a good sense of timing? It's like, yes. <laughs> they just basically had to play it. They basically played quarter note cowbell all the way throughout an entire song. And then it was a couple of years ago at Sackler, I saw what are they called? Um the name escapes me, but like this LA kind of teenage rock outfit sort of thing. And their guitarist ended up getting me up on up on stage, you know, right at the very end sort of thing. Well, it's just uh, yeah, yeah. all the walls of distortion and noise and like I was kind of like, he handed me the guitar and I can't play a single note on guitar. I mean, I feel um, bad now. You're going to have to take my guitar at some point. <laughs> I probably will be, to be honest, unfortunately. But, um, but I, ended up, so I ended up like kind of through, through these effects pedals, basically just like kind of tapping the guitar on the neck. That's the only thing I could do, and then like that's good enough, isn't it? It's somehow noise. I end up, somehow I end up being thrust to the mic in my hand, and so I made up a whole load of lyrics. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, amazing. And it, it was it was. Yeah, pretty you have to remember who it is. Who who's the band? It was oh god, what they called? Um, uh, Star Starcrawler. Oh I yeah, I know Starcrawler. Yeah, it's scary considering like their their guitarist could, is young enough to be my son. He's really good as well. Yeah, like he's way better than I am. Oh Jesus Christ, he's he's oh, he's, he's way better, better than I am as well. To be honest, <laughs> I mean, like, I find myself, you know, like, kind of, because I'm getting to that age where I'm almost old enough to be some people's dads. <laughs> do, you, do you ever find, do you know, like, so, like, whenever I watch stuff like Black Midi, I am technically oh, yeah. legally old enough to be all of their dads. Because they're all only like just 10, 20. I mean, that's a that's a band that knows music. Yeah. Oh God, they really do. I mean, way, like, way beyond my understanding. It's it's definitely it's they're one of those bands which do divide people's opinions because of. I completely like, understand why. I mean, yeah. it's it's mathematic. Yeah. Not, not everyone can get on board with with mathematic music. It just. Like some of the songs are so sick, yeah, and they're like they're perfect. And some of them I I can I can't understand because it's not. It just doesn't it doesn't mm. uh, like does it so easy with these doesn't click in in my mind. But then, mm. but some some of the songs for me like I'm not a huge uh, math rock or or prog fan, but some yeah. sometimes when people get it and they they amalgamate like. That four four sensibility with yeah. like with a completely messed up time signature with all this weird shit. When they nail it, I'm like, yes, that is sick. I mean, like when I whenever I watch them, I just spend the entire time watching the drummer, Morgan. Yeah, he's amazing. Like going, I mean, like he's he's had he's probably had training since he's like three years old. Well, you I know, guess so. I mean, you, you just look at him, just like going like, okay, this is like watching a multi armed octopus. Really, I met I, I met him actually. At, um, He's lovely. We played we played something with him, uh, a TV program. Yeah. Oh my god! How can I not remember? It's... 
I don't I don't remember Jeff. Maybe <laughs> but, 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 Oh the Mercury's, wasn't it? Oh yeah, but yeah, it would have been the Mercury's actually. Yeah, you I were, think so. You're both on the on the on the lineup for that. Yeah. I mean, oh actually now now I remember uh watching Anna Calvi. Oh god. Mercury's. Oh my god. Like, she's she's a, I, she's my a musician whole at the heart. Mind tingled when she when she was playing. It was mm. one of the most incredible performances I'd ever seen. I mean, I got to see her last um February last uh, uh, January because I did the whole independent venue week tour. And we got to see her and uh, Martha Sky Murphy playing the Brookston Windmill, which is oh, literally really? yeah, oh god, that really? was that was like one of those shows where I physically pretty much couldn't sleep afterwards. Yeah. Because it was like too much stimulation. What's what's the show that you've um what's the show that you've seen where you've seen like a band that shouldn't be in this tiny venue, but they are, and you've seen this show, and it's like one of those ones that like people you know when like Foo Fighters did yeah. uh that little that little pub show mm. um in Okay, it was it? Froome, wasn't it? It's Froome. Yeah, Froome. Like, have you ever have you ever been to a show like that? You know, where you've uh, just been like, "How the fuck did I get in here?" Kind of. I th- I mean, like, I I kind of have, but with like, but with with with, with, with sometimes when it'd be like kind of collaboration artists sort of thing. So like, um, I remember going to see like a really extraordinary David Lynch tribute gig at the at the coast of Hull. And it was like kind of, it was like yeah, Jenny Beth from Savages, uh, Stuart Staples from Tindersticks, um, Connor from The Villagers, um, God, what's his name? The, uh, Mick Harvey, he used to be in The Bad Seeds. Yeah. Um, and basically it was like kind of all-star amalgamation, kind of like, playing David Lynch songs. That's amazing. David Lynch soundtracks. And it was like, it gave birth to also one of my, my, my most awkward fan interaction moments. Go on. It's the, well, PJ Harvey was there. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. Um, and um, John Parrish is kind of like one of my neighbours in Bristol because he literally lives he lives a couple of streets from me. And I still kind of get a bit of, bit of a teen boy sort of thing going like, Wow. Okay. There's this kind of semi superstar, even though he's the lovely, even though he's like a really lovely person and really, really sweet. And lovely. <laughs> but, but I remember like kind of, um, I think it's just after the show had finished and, you know, kind of like milling around a little bit, kind of in the venue, and kind of got out from my seat and like kind of turned around and heard John go, Hi, Jeff, how are you? And turn around and I saw PJ Harvey and pretty much kind of like blacked out. I kind of like just had to run into a dark corner and kind of like, because I'm also kind of dyspraxic. And so if I get slightly anxious, then I tend to like either trip over things. So I kind right. of tripped over, so I kind of semi tripped over Satan, kind of fell into Jenny Beth and then nearly knocked out Connor from villages. <laughs> I mean, that sounds awkward as fuck. Yeah, to be honest, I mean, like, that, that is. I guarantee no one cared though, did they? Yeah, I think the thing, they probably wouldn't. But the thing is, though, that to me, yeah, in I know. My, in I my know. head, I would still like until I've until I've had, absolute failure. <laughs> yeah, because of like you can't help because of like you probably magnify things because of like self thought sort of thing. I mean, to them, it's probably just oh look, there's a funny person who's like kind of semi tripped over everybody and then just like kind of you know that sort of thing. How have you um, how have you found all this, Jeff? Because, I mean, you know, as shows are to you as much as they are to us and many other people. You know, like it's it's our lifeline. It's yeah. Our, it is. It's not a lifeline. It's just life. It's my therapy. It's my my happiness. It's my anger. Yeah. It's my like. It's everything to me. So like, and I and it's the same for you. So how are you? How are you doing, man? How are you I'm, dealing I'm, with this? I'm, I mean, like I think it was a good decision, you know, in, in November, like moving down to my folks, because then it was like kind of, you know, I've got self care sort of thing, and um, you know, like so for actually, because of like I've been doing lots of artwork, and I found actually having, you know, doing stuff like this has given me a routine. 
it's given me things to look forward to because of it's like, you know, I, even though I can't be here with you in person, I just still see your face and it's like, so for actually having that, that side of technology has been a bit of a blessing. Yeah, I get it. It, get, it adds, a, adds a sense of, I don't know if it, if it is a sense of normality because it's com this is completely mm. foreign to me, you know, like yeah, so, well, I, see you, I see you at venues, I see you yeah. in the street of Bristol, you know, and I can, whenever we brush past each other, we always stop and say hello and, and like give you a hug and stuff like that. And it's exactly. like, so this and is it's, very, very different. And I feel, and I think that's the thing, that's what I miss the most is actually I've realized, you know, how tactile I am as if in the fact of that, that that, you know, like I, I do like to say hello to people. I do like to give people hugs, and it's like if they need a bit of re even if they need a bit of reassurance. And I think, you know, that's how I like to view it. But then also, like I've been, you know, kind of I've been actually be kind of lucky, lucky as if I've had things to keep me busy. Yeah, I've had things, you know, like because I've been doing like stuff with preparing for like the exhibition. Which is supposed to be happening, and um, which which is going to well, we've got um, I've got something potentially quite big happening next week. So is it is it hush hush? Um, well, I've got a website launching kind of next week with okay. some of the paintings and stuff like that, and um, I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, I mean, I I look forward to actually having the day where people can actually see them in the flesh. Yeah, I mean, you know, we but we done. Who knows yeah. what that'll be? Yeah, but then like also at the same time, if we could do something that you know gives people some sense of hope, you know, and then actually that's that's probably the thing which I've been feeling is actually you know that you know even even with the live stream gigs, you know, they've they've helped give me hope because if it's like kind of keeping me going, sort of thing. Do you know, I've also enjoyed that people are still releasing albums. Yeah. Because the the movie world, which I, I which I love, I, lo yeah. I love films. Um, they they've it's really taken a knock too, and and people aren't releasing new movies at the cinema right. or, because there isn't a cinema. But things like you know, like James Bond has been pushed back three times. Yeah. Whereas other films have been put out on um, by Netflix and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly, and. Uh, Amazon. I've I've actually I rented a couple of movies on Amazon that were like home release. Yeah. So it would have been the cinema, but it's come out. So mm. luckily I've got um. There you go. It's my projector. Well, hey. The big white wall. I so you, I mean, I tell you, a brilliant film I watched on the weekend was The White Tiger. Oh really? I don't I know. Re I really highly rate it. It's um. It's based on like kind of. Like an award-winning kind of novel, oh, yeah. it's about it's it's like a bit like it's a tiny bit like Parasite in in the sense that it's about like kind of the class system in India. Okay, it's about like how the rich are really really worshipped, even though, and it's about like kind of like someone who's his ambition is basically to become a he's like from a really poor family, and it's like his ambition is to become. Like the servant to this really rich person because of he really kind of like looks up to everything about them because of it's like okay. seen as being rich as being like being holier than thou sort of thing um well, i'll check that out it's 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 really good i mean i, um, I felt quite lucky because because i was in hamburg and mm. uh the situation in in, in hamburg was like a lot a lot more manageable than it is here in the UK. Like cinemas yeah. were still open for a very long time. Like I watched, uh, I watched Tenet in the cinema. That, yep. when that I saw out. that in the cinema as well. Um, and I watched um, On the Rocks with uh, Bill Murray and and uh, Kajillionaire. That was really yeah. good. I really enjoyed Kajillionaire. That was the last yeah. time I watched at the cinema. Now actually, I think my favourite films I've, I've watched at the cinema last year is Saint Maud. If you ever get a chance to see that, but it's freaking brilliant. Okay. I mean, it's it's uh, it a, a trains again. I'm oh, sorry. I can hear it in the background. I mean, I should probably just shut the door, but I, I just wanted some air in there. That's fair enough. So at least it's not whiz with his metal. All right, that's that's actually happening downstairs. <laughs>
Do you want to go? Do you want to go say hello to Wiz? Yeah, I'd love to see him. Let's, see let's, say hello to him. let's just go downstairs. Let's hope the internet holds, mate. Let's... Fingers crossed. But we know Bristol's like some type of connection. <laughs> I mean, I had a nightmare trying to get the internet in this place. Wow. Hold up. Uh... Oh, I can. I can hear something coming through. There we go. That's good. Hey, Wes. Hey, <laughs> buddy. You can't, you can't hear anything over this music. What are you saying? <laughs> yeah, he's just saying hello. Hello. Hey, Wes. Let's get out of there. Yeah. But no, I think, I think that, but, yeah. It's definitely interesting hearing that blasting in the background. <laughs> he's always, he's just, he's always in his little hole listening to, to listening to metal. Does so, he listen to other sorts of genres? Nah, he's always just listening to metal. Or, 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 like that's that's an unusual sound coming out of his his speakers right now. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds a bit like new metal. Uh, well, I don't know what. It's a bit pro. I think it's prog. It's more proggy. Yeah. He loves prog. He's in, in he's in a a prog band, isn't he? Called uh, yeah. the Osiris Club. Yeah, because I think they they Osiris Club. Yeah, because they play. I know they played the Cube a couple of times. I think. Yeah, they did. Yeah, me and Dev went and watched them. It was good. In his, uh, <laughs> I remember like the whole time we we play live. Yeah, yeah. Wiz tells me and Bowen to turn our amp down. Yeah. So we always have it as loud as we can. So we like we like the feeling, you know, like your body rattles from the, from the force of the amp. Yeah. And then Wiz will be like, "It's too loud. You got to turn it down." And then we're yeah. Like, and then I go watch Wiz in the cube. Yeah. He's got a hundred watt high watt. Yeah. At full. Yep. <laughs> and like he isn't doing anything. He's just stood there. And the other guitarist is playing. Yeah. He's just stood there, Wiz. And then the moment we started playing, the whole fucking venue was like, Whoa. and me and Dev were like, what an asshole. Like, yeah, exactly. the <laughs> there a blah, there's this noise. Oh. Especially also in a place as intimate as the cube as well. Right. I mean, I mean, I mean, like, I remember, I mean, like, I think one of my most special shows I saw last year was in the cube, actually. Um, so I remember seeing a guy called, there's a really amazing spiritualist improvised soul singer called uh, Lonnie Holly. I don't know. Every single, oh man, he's, some of his stuff is amazing. But he, it's basically like if every single show that he plays, he never plays the same song once. So that's the only time that he'll ever play that tune. Oh really? Yeah. And so it's, it's but that's... You got a lot of songs. Oh yeah, loads. He's, 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 he's like, I mean, and that was his 70th birthday. And so he played, it was, it was an absolutely amazing show. Oh, I mean, it's just, great, just it? him and his, him and his own with his piano. Cause he's, an, he's like a kind of incredible piano player. And he's also like, um, like, a, I guess the term would be folk artist because if he does like lots of American folk art about <clears throat> kind of like, I guess like colonialism in America. Okay. And about, um, but it's like I've seen him play a couple of times, and it's literally like the description which I'd give you is if you could feel almost like as if his hands like reaching into your soul and oh, like I, caressing I, you, sort of thing. Yeah, I can imagine that. And in many ways, that happened. Yeah, and it's also like as if in he, he wishes it's almost like as if in every song he treats it as like a dream. And it's like, right, okay, this, this song's going to kind of like kind of uplift you because it's about searching for the good in things and about like kind of, you know, kind of like taking out the negativity sort of thing. Which is lovely. I mean, it should be more and more. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And in anxieties and, and the problems that people face and try and help them. Yeah, which is, which is what I, I think that... You know, and it's, it's like the importance of how music can, you know, like kind of relate to people on multiple different levels, really. Because so like, it's like, so thin, 
you know, if you're if you're like and obviously performing certain messages sort of thing, and it's about how people reinterpret them. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. I've always found that special. Like no, you know, like no two people can can read the same message from one of your songs. Even if even if you explain what the song is actually about, people mm. still have a different interpretation of, of what it means to them. You know? Yeah, because also like the certain songs, because like we always reflect on, you know, like our key stages to our lives, the songs. And it's like sipping, so like sipping, like to like sipping. The song could be, you know, like the message could be about something very specific, but because of its to them, they relate to it in a different way. Yeah. You know, like as if in, so we always attach um, like, a, like a memories. I'm trying to think of how to word it really. Um, uh, I, know, I know what you mean. I don't really know what to call it. I mean, I always liked that, uh, the attachment of memory to music or, or even like, you know, like how you, you can attach a, a memory to weather the feeling yeah. of, of, of a cold breeze can can spark a memory, um, which you which you would never have have. And then and then a year later, that first cold breeze hits you, and you remember the same memory. Mm. And songs, like there's been songs that I couldn't listen to anymore for a long period of time because it had too too many connections to bad times in my life. Mm. Like for a long period of time, I couldn't listen to the Doors anymore because it just reminded me of taking crack, and I didn't, you know, I was yeah. trying to trying to avoid um all all of these parts of my life and now you know doors can come on i'll be like yeah, all right doesn't matter yeah. you know i can i can enjoy it again but for a long period of time it was it was it was gone did it remind you of like maybe you and your darkest moments sort of thing yeah, yeah. well i think i think that it's like the same with me like as if i can listen to certain songs because of they, they they remind me of certain things or like because sometimes also like I I know it's gonna sound big big headed or something, but I sometimes get synesthesia, especially from like kind of sometimes contemporary classical shows. Mm -hmm. And I remember having like quite a bad episode which actually ended up also being an inspiration at the same time because of I ended up making a short film because of it. Um, but I'm, I went to, it was after Simple Things, I think it was not last year, but the year before. And it was like the day after I went to like a contemporary classical gig. And there's something about sometimes sounds that it kind of triggers off certain memories. Mm -hmm. And so it was like the first half of the show it was, it was like a kind of a collaboration in between the violinist and an electronica composer. And so the first half of the show was more like kind of gentle and like I kind of remember like kind of things of my grandparents and you know almost having like cinematic kind of Skype sort of thing and then in the second half I remember that they played like the last song which really um, it reminded me of being in hospital and like kind of coming out of a three-day coma and Kind of the the kind of the feeling of kind of terror and panic and like kind of sweat that that brought on. Yeah. Well, every, every time you listen to that song, you would feel the same thing. Oh, um, not necessarily, this, but that, that performance. Yeah. I didn't really listen because of. Here's the thing: is I, I mean, I listened to. I mean, I've gone to listening to more music now, but in terms of like kind of. Like a couple of years ago, I was I was doing most of my listening while I was actually out at gigs. It's and weird, isn't it? Just imagine, have you listened to the albums recently that you normally listen to on the in, in venues and how different they are? Um, a little bit, but actually, I, I find myself actually because I've 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 started to try and podcast, so it's like I find myself actually searching for more and more newer and newer stuff. Overall, oh, really? I mean, yeah. yeah, because of like, I want to, because of like, I guess it's my, my ideal dream job would be like being a radio, like in a presenter sort of thing, as if in like, because of like, I want to go, right, I'm, I'm constantly always find, trying to find a new thing. And that I've always got 
that addiction to the to like the shiny shiny new yeah as I call it sort of thing and but I'd always you know like like I I can find myself every now and again going back and listening to people like Kid Carpet who I used to go and see a lot on the local scene and I find myself also kind of going back to you know some some local Bristol artists who I used to go and watch a lot um so like stuff like three hoes, two Mexicans, and a tin of spanners. I have no idea what that is. Oh, they're, 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 if, if if you want if you want to see a band, that, you know, like kind of eclipse the Saint Pierre Snake Invasion for the best and most hilariously sarcastic and also kind of politically incorrect song titles. All right. Just go and just go and look them up. What what are they called? Um, three hoes, two Mexicans, and a tin of spanners. They they were, um, I mean I'm not quite sure how I'd sum them up, but they're like they're kind of like a bit like a kind of Dudley's answer to McCluskey. Okay. But um, I mean, but they they kind of they I think they were I think they were Dudley, they were like kind of psychiatry students who all moved to Bristol, and it's like well, kind I'm of, very intrigued to check this out. Yeah. Uh, but they, 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 I mean, like they had stuff like, um, I mean, what, 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 what song titles can I remember with those? I think my favourite was, I'm a celebrity supermodel high on coke, licking the shit of a pipe because cock, was was one of my favourites. I, I get it. I get your, I get your references to uh, Saint Pierre. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, definitely. I, I love Saint Pierre. Uh, like, I love oh man, they're a freaking great band. I mean, oh, amazing. I think it's you know, I think that, it's... that's a band that um, when I got sober, I watched Saint Pierre, and I was like, "Shit, I haven't seen a band like this in years." Yeah, like what the fuck? Damien was just this mad bastard, just jotting about everywhere, like some taunt in the crowd, you know? Yeah, like, completely breaking that like that band crowd barrier. Tear it, you tear it apart, and I'd always watch it and be like, like they'd always fill me with like with joy, not fear. Not yeah. Like, uh, I never felt unsafe at one of their shows. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just always like you didn't know what was going to happen, and yeah. that was exciting. And you always knew it was going to be funny. Yeah. You also knew he was going to pick on someone in the crowd, you know, and and push them to a point, but yeah. not too far. And I always, always enjoyed that. It's very I mean, I, I loved them because of, I think it was, it was that, it was that kind of ability to like how you can like kind of sometimes talk about a serious subject, but also mix it in with humour. Yeah. And actually, you know, sometimes it makes. I think sometimes if you've got the ability to do that, it can make it more poignant. Definitely. Because if instead of like just like going right, okay, I'm going to shout at the converted, I'm going to gently twist the con twist these people's arms and then make them converted. I, but then I, also like, I remember seeing them, um, I mean, I saw, I've seen them millions of times. I mean, there, there was a, there was one summer where pretty much I saw them on three consecutive Saturday nights. So it, it was like, um, I think it was like Harbour Fest. Um, I think they were, they, were, they were either headlining or supporting someone at the, maybe at the Louisiana, and the other time was um, my friend put on like a charity festival thing at the Trinity, and I, I, I joked to them saying that that for the past three weeks they've been like my 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 aunt and tech, my strictly Kandarsik, and like kind of um, my Britain's Got Talent. Do you know? Uh, like, comparing uh, the, I was comparing the festival, and yeah, I remember yeah. like kind of going away because Dodgy were headlining. They, they, I remember like kind of getting away with making a really, really crude joke, joke about Dodgy. I, I, I missed a bit of what you said there because it, the, the connection went. Oh, sorry. I don't know what happened. Sorry. I don't know. Well, I was just saying that I saw the St. Pierre like on three consecutive Saturdays and I basically compared them uh, to like my Britain's Got Talent, my, my kind of aunt, Saturday night with Anton Deck. And like strictly come dancing because I was comparing the show. How uh, which one was the best? Oh, I think definitely the Trinity one, especially when he threw, when he threw up mid song. Yeah, he was like, does kind of, that, didn't he? Yeah. 
I guess the thing is, though, so if he finishes screaming, I know, you know screaming he gets, then, then you know, violent. it's like sometimes what goes down does come back up occasionally. Yeah, it, the way the way he sings. Although one one of the other things about Damien that I always found quite impressive is that he, he smashes out that scream and then he can just sing like yeah. with a really nice voice. Well, and actually, to be honest, I mean, like, got those two sides. Yeah, and also the thing is, though, is that you don't, I mean, like, I think with the very first early EPs, I think he did most of the, the music as well. And actually, you don't necessarily see that side to him. No, well, actually, he um, he's he's decked as a guitarist for us a couple of times. He's, he's mm. covered for Bowen. Yeah. And, and he's covered for me. And wow. He always, like, when he, he'd come to, he'd come to a... Um, a practice and we teach him the parts and it never really took much for him to learn like i mean we're not we're not, we don't write anything that, that difficult but well hey i'd love to see you write a prog 15 8 minute long song <laughs> you know, come on. Are you are damien now you play it yeah exactly here, here you go so damien we're going to give you like kind of uh, uh this one's going to be played in like kind of really odd minor scale with, with major keys he'd be all right with it He's one of those. He's one of those people that can just do these things. And then, it's, it's annoying to watch. Like you're like, oh, this one, this one's a bit trickier. And he's like, yeah, got it. Yeah. yeah. But I think, but I think the other thing is, I think that, but I think that it's also like something which is about his character where he doesn't really show up in that way. You know, like he sometimes, you know, you get people who are that gifted and they they will show up continuously, and you just go. No, not that, not that interesting. But whereas with him, he doesn't really show. He kind of he has got a bit of a bravado, but he doesn't show off. I know, I know what you mean. He, he is. I'd say he is a show off, but not a. You know, he, yeah. he, he, he not. He wouldn't rub it in your face, but he, he's big headed. Oh yeah, he can't. He can't be. I mean, like <laughs> in some ways. But the thing is, so, but but you know, if you spoke to him personally, that you know that that. No, he's, he's, he's an honest persona. Person as well. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's, I found that actually that's very much, you know, like if I, if I'm, if I go from like liking an artist to loving an artist sort of thing, if I like, if I kind of, if I find myself like kind of getting on with them as people, then it can I mean, like, like at the moment, um, one of the records I'm really loving is Arlo Park's album. I haven't heard it yet. Oh, it's beautiful. It's it's a it's a it's it's one of those kind of records which I think will take people by surprise. I yeah. mean, because also her her songwriting for someone who's twenty years old is just like um, it really does defy her age because it it feels like a much more mature record. Okay. Sort of thing than you expect the average twenty-year-old to be coming out with, and it's insane, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like that. Um, I mean, especially the song "Black Dog." I mean, Jesus Christ! I, I whenever I hear that, I just literally well up in tears because of it. It speaks so personally to the soul, especially about you know, kind of depression and about you know, like the anxieties of life, sort of thing. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, I was also like kind of, I guess also this period made me miss places like the Louisiana. Was that the other day? Yeah, no, I saw the video. I saw, I saw the video that you guys released last night. It was nice. It was nice to be in there. We, we, um, we used the, the Louisiana um, last year before we did the Abbey Road session. Yeah. So we had this sense of. You know, be, being because they, they let us use the room upstairs to just rehearse for a bit and, and mm. get a feeling for not being in a practice room, but being in a place where it feels like you're, you know, got proper sound system and, yeah. and feel. And we love the Louisiana. It's one. Oh, it's an amazing venue. By far one of my favorite venues in Bristol and, and maybe even in the world, you know? Not yeah. A lot of people. It's just, it's got, I've got so many good memories in, the, in Louisiana. So have I. I mean, like, I remember seeing even stuff like Fleet Foxes and Beach House at the Louisiana. And like, that's one of my 
probably top three all time shows. Just yeah, I remember it... seeing Plastic Mermaids with uh, Rain. Oh man! And and I remember like when when she came up and and sang with them. Yeah. Like I, she, she wasn't. They weren't as because um, they're they're quite a tight knit mm. group now. You know, Rain joins them all the time. They go tour. Yeah. I'm not even sure if they're actually now one one band but when she went up at that point it wasn't so much like that and when she sang uh what's the song is it like saturn or something yeah um like i was welling up I her voice does up. things to me to be honest In i mean I'll, I'll admit well, i mean jesus christ i lost the plot i mean like I'm, I'm, i'll admit she rains one of those things i think is really really underrated she's amazing i mean like to be honest i've i've, I've I, I mean, I find myself getting quite speechless in front of her quite a few times, to be honest with you. And I think it's partly because of, like, sometimes when you hear people who, like, can do certain things, so it's like, kind of, you know, like, I guess it's a bit like, you know, like, like I'll go and see certain acts, you know, which won't necessarily always, always make me feel good, but, but they'll always connect with me. So, like, even people like Lowe, for instance. Mm -hmm. I yeah, mean, like I'd say, going to Low gig isn't necessarily the most positive thing, but it's about, you know, like, you still feel uplifted. Yeah, that album, like, the Pink album, the recent one. Yeah. What's the, I don't remember what it's called, but that was amazing. I mean, well, to be honest, they've been doing that sort of stuff for, like, 30 years. And so, like, they, when they originally formed, they would have been, I think, late 80s. Mm. But they, I mean, they, they've been one of the bands who, who've really been consistently kind of going me through the first lockdown because of every Friday night they were doing like a live stream on their Instagram. Oh, really? And they, they it was like kind of, it was basically uh, Mimi and Alan who were like the, the main, the central couple because obviously they're, they're married. Um, they, they, it was basically like them performing from their living room. Oh, and. Excellent. It was like every single time I'd be like, right, okay, even if it was coming through my phone, I'd still just have to find myself kind of like sitting still, almost having to take deep breaths because of like, especially like when they were harmonizing. So there's something about like their, their voices just together, just like would instantly make me well up. Really? I, I, it's a, it is amazing, isn't it? I love it. I mean, I think that's, that's the thing is that even though, you know, I can't be in the same room as most people, I could still feel the connection. Mm -hmm. And the other thing which I, which I noticed with some of the live streams is that, um, like some, some of the things I'd be getting on, like some of the specialist subjects stuff, I'd still know everyone on the chat. I'd be joining in the comments and I'd be like, oh, look, this person's here. I mean, that means I could either can like, you know everyone, don't you? Yeah, but, but, but you know, but you know what I mean. Is if in like my my whole thing at the start would be like, right, anyone wants a hug, I'd line them up for like virtual hugs, and I and like kind of, but it's it's, it's like, but if those things can give people a little bit of hope, yeah, for sure. You know, and well, I think that's the same with like even with as I said with, with like live stream shows, it's not the same. But it's still, you know, it's something. But what's, I mean, like, I was going to say this because I've actually one. I think one of the, I think one of the, uh, there's several moments which I, so I've seen, I saw you guys a few times at festivals last year. I think one of my favourite memories, admittedly, well, not from last year, the year before, I mean, was when you guys played Stand and Cooling Festival. Oh yeah, and. I remember like that. I remember like, obviously being in amongst all the AF gang, kind of usual people, but also seeing this 11 year old girl kind of literally throw herself full on into the mosh pit with her parents, like trying to shield, try, somebody tried to shield her. It's amazing, isn't it? And it's like, like, that's what I'm on about in that, like, you never know what's going to happen, though, man. Yeah. And I love that. Do you know, oh, one of the greatest things I ever saw um, was. There was a disabled lad at one of our shows, mm. and the crowd picked him up in his wheelchair, and he was crowd surfing. And I had never seen such happiness in my life. Like the fact that everyone 
had they carried him they carried him for like a whole song held him up there and he, yeah he was just slamming his arms in the air he was mm. losing his mind and by seeing that i lost my mind yeah. it was one of the most one of the most beautiful things i'd ever seen how happy he was it was fucking sick but actually and also about i mean especially even if you're going through like a like kind of like a show where you may be not entirely feeling it when you see those little sparks it's like wow okay you do kind of like click out from out of that kind of automatic driving zone yeah definitely that's that's the shit that brings you back i mean also i remember like kind of i think also i had one of the most terrifying experiences admittedly with you guys was also green man green man was pretty mental actually yeah that was that was good show it was it was a good show but i remember like i remember like there was like one particular guy trying to kind of like tried to stage invade i think he's like really high yeah i remember like, tried, tried to climb up the side didn't he yeah 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 that, that was the side which i was on because obviously i was I DJing you guys. <laughs> and I, I was like <laughs> over, i was like really terrified because i was like scared of being pulled over with all my records sort of thing because it takes me about a million years to pack away all my to, to pack them away it was a really good show that it was i mean like that was generally one of those moments where I did get really overwhelmed when Jay gave me the shout out. I did actually, you know, for like love song. I found myself actually trying to hide behind the records because it was because I do get like kind of, and I do admit that I do being being a soppy emotional git that I am, I do get very easily overwhelmed. I mean, it's nice to be, isn't it? Yeah. Still, I think you know. I, 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 I get overwhelmed. I get. I think I get overwhelmed even when I'm just thinking about it. Just like going, frick me, that happened. Yeah, I know that. I know. That. I completely understand that feeling. I mean, I. I think something that this whole time has done is also not made me appreciate, it, but mm. focus my appreciation more too. Because as much as I, I've never ever stopped loving what what we do. Mm. But like I said, like those moments when you you turn into almost like a robot when you're playing, and then you 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 come back and you and you find find that you've done it. So like after doing tour after tour after tour, it's not like they get the same because they they don't. They're always right. different. You play different venues. There's different people in the crowds. There's your your whole being is different. Each each venue you walk in, your attitude is different. But every time I walk on that stage is completely new mm. each stage is, is a new feeling and a new moment also do you think you know like as the fans got bigger do you think it's added like in a more pressure to you guys no like I, I don't feel any pressure walking on that stage ever yeah. because like well, I mean, that would be a lie, obviously, in, yeah. entirely. There's probably been a, a few shows where I have been nervous, but the moment I walk on the stage, the moment I get on it and, and start playing, there is like, all right, Alexandra Palace. Yeah. Just before I walked on that stage, obviously, I was shitting myself. Yeah. 10,000 people. So that, that, that was huge. That, 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 going on. that felt like a really monumental moment, to be honest with you. And, and it was. And... Um, but the moment I walked on the stage, the moment I started playing, no fear, yeah. no, no worries, because it's like being at home. Like that, mm. that moment is like, it's just, the, it's the change of everything. Like I can, I can walk onto the stage in the most foul mood. Yeah. I can be really tired. I can be really upset. I can be, I can like, I've had shows Stressed where out, I'm, like, thing. I mean, like, I do not want to do this right now. I do not want to walk on it. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to play a show at all. For the moment, my feet step on the stage, I'm in. I'm completely yeah. in, and I love it. But it's, I guess it's a bit like kind of, it's like, it's like balancing like that level of like kind of professionalism, but also with, I guess like, I guess like how you can like all of a sudden you, your energy does change when you kind of go onto the stage, because sometimes you can be feeling like kind of. I mean, I, I don't know how, how, whether you do that, you know, but do you do any stuff, like obviously, for warming up? and? Yeah, we always, we try and get ourselves riled up. We try and get a bit of energy, a bit of blood flowing, and 
run around. I, I have to do some stretches for my back because I yeah. have a really bad back. And um, that happens with a lot with a lot of tall people. With a lot of tall people, people happen to be quite tall. But it's still it's, like I've been off tour for a long time now. It's it's never going to get better. I have um, I have two prolapsed discs in the bottom of my spine. Ouch. So ouch. It's it's bad. Um, but for some reason, when I'm playing, I can I can ignore it. But then after the show, I cannot. Is that ouch. It. Is that is that it's like how yeah. it's it's like kind of like when you're it's like seeing those kind of like oh those some of those old singers where you see them like kind of old performers, but you see them on stage and they're doing all the full dance routines, and afterwards they they they're, they're, they're carried off. In the frame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. There's literally a, a moment at uh, Alexandra Palace where uh, my mum was there. She, she got to see it. And there's a, there's a point where I was crowd surfing upside down vertically. Uh, hell. So my feet were in the air. My feet <laughs> in, and like I was being carried around. And I got at the end of the show, I got off. My mum just stopped me and went, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so I, like, yeah, I guess so. I just, you know. But then, it's, but then also, it's not brilliant as if having, you know, like kind of, having that kind of reaction from your parents because it's like no. if, 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 if if like if anything it's gonna be the parents especially if you've got parents that you get that, that you're lucky enough to get along with sort of thing is if in like they will deliberately stiff stick in like the pin in the whoopee cushion of the, of the ego sort of thing okay. i remember the first show i played yeah um it was at uh avonmouth rugby club wow me and my friends uh, had a band. We played a few covers and uh, a couple of our own songs. Um, it's called A Boy Brush Red, the band. Well, hey. And uh, my mum watched half a song and left. <laughs> well, it's, it's, sometimes no, it's like, too loud for me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's fair enough. But then the thing is, is that she's obviously seen, you know, what music has given you sort of thing. Yeah, for sure. You know, and I think that it is like, but, but, but also like sometimes when you do need to get that ego deflating, just go, just go on to the parents. Uh, I mean, definitely. I mean, and I think that, in, you know, I can, I can speak for myself because like sometimes even around Plymouth, I'll get stopped by people and then, and then like kind of, but then every now and again, my dad will say something really sarcastic, or like my mum will kind of like. I can, I can tell you now, Jeff, if you and I walked around the street together, you would get stopped way more than I would. Probably, yeah. Way more. Weirdly. Yeah. It, it's probably, it's, and it's going to think of some next week, it's probably going to be a lot more as well. For sure. Which I'm, which I'm probably going to send, which I'm probably kind of, in a, I know it's going to sound really horrible, but I'm kind of semi glad that I'm kind of down in Plymouth to a certain extent. Just well, partly because of being around family, but then also partly because of I know that I can have that space. Yeah. No, sort of thing. Nice. But your 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 space and your time is also important, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think there's always a lot expected of 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 people in general, just always people expect so much of each other. Mm. Sometimes like some days we, we just don't have it to give. And like you are completely entitled to have this this time to not give anything of yourself and 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 take time for yourself. Yeah, and then and that's what we, we all forget that massively. Oh, we definitely do. But then then all of a sudden I'll have the dog turn up and go like, right, you've just spent too much time focusing on yourself. You're gonna love me. Oh yeah, but that's 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 fair. Yeah, you yeah, are that... you are, and you never will be as important as a dog. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> to be honest, it's, it's like one thing in the world is dogs. It, oh yeah, definitely. I mean, like, let's face it. I mean, God is basically dog spelt backward. There we go. You know, it's just true. So God looked in the mirror and said, and saw dog as man's Maybe best God friend. Is a dog. Yeah. What's that? Maybe God is a dog. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, maybe he is. Realize. Yeah. Maybe the Egyptian. It's not a man. It's not a woman. It's yeah. a dog. It's a dog. It's it's basically like, but. That's what I found is that actually that if, hey, if, if God was a dog, which dog would it be? Oh God, um, probably be my parents' dog, I think. Right, but what breed is it? Oh, she's um, oh God, she's a real mixed breed. 
she's definitely what they call like kind of um yeah definitely like she's like kind of border collie crossed with a bit of um like kind of i i think irish kind of like irish wolfhound and a Ooh. bit of yeah she's big. kind of like she's basically like kind of and a bit Sounds and definitely like a bit of whippet as well so she's fast really? yeah so it's, it's it, i think um because I, I obviously i had a lurcher which is yeah. a, a uh whippet cross with a greyhound and we had we actually had a um uh another one which looked like it had uh irish wolfhound in it and the panic because they get massive no grow to be huge irish wolfhound well she's big, big fear that that was going to happen i think well, well she's definitely in the collie size oh, so she's definitely like, like so it's like, like it could be a nightmare though is it a lot of energy oh yeah well the thing, the thing is though, so she, she's also got a really loving sweet nature yeah i know so she's not like um that the the breed like lurchers in general if you if there's a bit of whippet if there's a bit of like um long boy in in yeah. in, the, uh, in the breed then it, it's she, just they're just kind when she comes and wakes me up in the morning by basically just gently st sticking her nose in my in my face and like kind of obviously wagging her tail and leaning into me and then like kind of runs off again that's nice and i, I think, think it's, I, it. I, haven't, I haven't had a dog for a while now but then you know, like it's I think, really, really hard not to have dogs. Yeah, I think also like, cause I think sometimes it's hard to give. So I realised that, you know, like I like this is something which I knew for a long time. Anyway, it's like sometimes I do things like gigs and other things. It's basically like kind of reasons to leave my flat. Yeah. And and so like, um, I guess that. If I was if I was having a good day, especially if I was if I was doing stuff before going out to a show, sort of thing, then I then I feel a lot more confident around people. Whereas if I had one of my days where I've been really shut up, then I'd find it a lot harder. Uh, to yeah. Kind of interact. I actually I find that in in general myself when I when I came back from. When I came back from Hamburg to, to Bristol, I had to quarantine for 10 days. And that, that period of time, I, like, that, like for me, I, I find it very difficult to just be s stuck inside. So oh, like, it's horrible. When, when, this is why I feel so thankful that I've got people around me, because if I was yeah. alone, I'd lose my mind yeah. like, completely. And that was just 10 days. Like, pe some people have been, uh, like, were alone for, like, three months. Longer than that, some of them have been like alone a year. Exactly. I mean, like, you look at, I mean, like, because God knows, I mean, like, how some of the people who, who, you know, don't have family or don't have people that they could, you know, that they've got in their double, whereas, you know, I've got my parents, I've got also, like, my, I've got, like, uh, my sister literally a minute down the road. And so we're part of, like, a care bubble with my niece and nephew. And that brings me so much life because of, you know, which I didn't wouldn't have had in Bristol That's necessarily right. because of I lived on my own. I had my own little flat in Tottenham. I mean, sometimes I'd see people when I was out and about, but I noticed that it really impacted how, you know, either confidence-wise or how I even talk to people. Yeah, definitely. You know, so like, I completely understand. I mean, I'm not, but, but, but also did randomly meant that I did end up accidentally meeting half of Harry Styles' backing band, like <laughs> kind of just outside the outside in Totterdown. Oh, really? Yeah, that's weird. It, it was kind of like random, it's like it's like okay, but um, or maybe I think it's just one of the members actually, but it was like kind of, I remember being kind of like. It was like a really boiling hot day because it's during the heat wave, and I could remember being killed over by people who I can vaguely recognise. They all turned out to be like table session musicians, so it's like people who played with like Thurston and Moore and stuff like that. And they were like, "Oh yeah, and she plays. She plays for Harry Styles." I looked at her, and like kind of must make it couldn't like react very much. But go. Oh yes, you do. So like, I remember like seeing the video of Harry Styles doing Sledgehammer, 
and I like, recognised her face. It was like, but I also kind of like got the kind of like, I don't know, it's really weird, like a paralysed and being slightly awkward, so I just fixated on her dog because she had a really cute dog with her. She, she lives in Bristol then. I don't know. I mean, I didn't really get to speak that much because it was it was one of those days where because of when when the weather gets really hot, sometimes I get quite bad body anxiety, especially if I'm continuously sweating all the time. And so I was like, it was like literally about ten minutes of me just like going, oh, that's nice, and then like kind of end up running down to the ruin instead, just being just being sat outside the ruin all evening. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, uh, like it's one of those places, isn't it, in the summer, if you walk past the ruin, you're going to see someone you know. Yeah. Well, actually, not just, the summer, not just the summer. It's like, it, it's, I find it a bit like, kind of like cheers. Yeah. Thing, know. You know, like you turn up and you're almost guaranteed to know every single person that's there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. It's like the alternative version of cheers. It's like you turn up, you'll be like, oh, look, there's Ash, there's Graham, there's, you know, like, you can almost imagine them, there's all the Cheers yeah. characters. Yeah. It, it's, it's different, like, they, they, they all fulfill, like, it's been like, oh, look, there's the Kelsey Kramer kind of person, there's the kind of, you know, the person. I mean, it would be a much shitter version of Cheers, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, much more foul mouth, sarcastic version? Oh. Uh. I um I I need to go, Jeff. Oh man, well lovely. Thank you so much for giving up your time, Lee. More, more than happy. It's more been happy. it's been lovely, dude. Yeah, it's same to you. It's been really nice to chat with you. Yeah, I know. So we it's haven't actually time since I've seen you. We, I know we we haven't actually had the time to chat. To be honest, because the last few times I've seen you, it's been like really really hectic nights, and so like exactly. to actually have this time, it's been really wonderful. It is really nice. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lee. It's nice to see you. Good luck with your, your exhibition. Yeah, man. Well, hopefully by the summertime, we might be able to actually allow people into things. And so we might actually be doing, you know, like a show in the island is the plan. Yeah. Amazing. But well, I mean, if, if, if I'm around and, it's, and, it's, and people are allowed in, I will definitely be there. Thank you so much, Lee. I love you, buddy. Love to you, man. Look out, Sam. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.